more or nothing. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of More or Nothing with Ryan and Max in what was an incredible weekend of Six Nations Rugby proving that pundits and professionals alike aren't really that into rugby knowledge as a whole. What is that noise? Is that the Italian national anthem you know about? Hey, suck on your eyes, I'll stand by it. How's the fan slam looking now, eh? What is that? Is that. I don't even know what that noise is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds so sweet. That's the beautiful, beautiful dulcet tones of Italians preaching patriotic glory. Did, did, did you boys see. um? See that stuff in the news about Kate and the photo editing stuff. Like, oh, that yeah. is very interesting. Now, let us all... Max, let us don't! All, don't bite! Don't bite! Let us, please! Now, let us all speculate on what that indicates, no, shall we? No. Let's not, go down this oh, rabbit hole, if you will. Hey? He's Houdini'd <laughs> you! He's put a little... He's put a little... He's like, my, with my kids! Oh, here you go. Are you upset? Have a look at this. Oh. Don't, Max. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, no, we've, got, we've got plenty of time to talk about how Men and Cello single handedly beat our 15 Highlanders. But, mate, but also, did you see Primark to raise UK steel workers' <laughs> paper on, just on, on, on <laughs> Yahoo News? <laughs> No, I, like nine percent. Primark are about to raise, yeah, store workers by nine yeah. percent. That's a, that's really good of them. Like that's. Bro, what about Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> right, idiots! Come on, um, come on, back. come on! Well, firstly, do we, Ryan? Are you going to have? You know, is this your opportunity? Because I tell you what, some this is some of the greatest social media stuff that's emanating right now is very much centered on on predictions and laughter and and sitting there and belittling others and too easy and all of this sort of stuff by 14 points at least in slow motion. And now is your opportunity to talk. I just, do you know what? I'm just ashamed that the Welsh didn't go and back it up by like, mate, you just, they could have just made it a complete fucking mayhem weekend of rugby if yeah. they'd gone and beaten the French and done the fair. job, which I thought they were going to do at one point. I was like, this That's is it. And then, and then Mother's Day got right in the fucking way. I had to go out for dinner and I thought, well, what way is we going to win? And you know, when you don't want to leave the house and then you're like, well, I don't want to look at the score until I get home. And it was like 23 22, 60 minutes in, and I'm leaving the house to go for dinner. I'm thinking, Jesus, I don't want to find out. And I genuinely thought I was coming home to see three huge fucking upsets at a weekend of Six Nations. But listen, boys, everyone that says rugby's boring, go back and watch that weekend of rugby because it's been ridiculous. It has been madness. And we, we chatted to a Mark earlier on, Max, when you were grinding away, sweating out the hangover from your weekend. Yes, that's right. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to phone Pat and tell him you've been on the piss all weekend. And... Uh, Anyway. We chatted. We chatted to to Monty Muani mm. earlier, and um, I said, "Listen, they they deserved it. They deserved it. Italy deserved the win. Good on them." And we've we've said that that Italy are building, and are. yeah, that's it. We can still win the triple crown. We're the only motherfuckers that can do that. <laughs> oh God! I'm oh, seriously. Oh, well played. That is a rep. That is a repost if I've ever seen one. Well, well played, Ryan. We can still do it. We can still win the triple That's crown. That's how bananas this six station has been. Yeah, fair play. That is it. That sums it up. We could we, listen here. I've got. We could still win the triple crown, right? But equally, if Italy win with a bonus point, Scotland could drop all the way back down to like four. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I keep thinking it's something wrong with the with the <laughs> Wi-Fi every time that happens. <laughs> but that um, that could happen. Italy could win with a bonus point at the weekend, mm. and Scotland could then end up finishing fourth. And there we were. There I was going for a fan slam. I was going for a grand yeah, slam. Yeah. Then I was going for a fan slam, slam, and now I'm going for fuck all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's completely gone, Pete Tong. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. But, before um, we get yeah. into that, fellas, let's just because uh, we. we 
it, in a roundabout way, because Ryan, you've experienced the depths and the delights, because you also were at Twickenham uh, for for the for the game between England and Ireland. Uh, but just quickly, let's hear from Max. Um, what were you up to? Was it? Uh, what was it? Where were you? Depravity in Prague. Where were you? What were you doing? Um, I was celebrating two of my closest friends' 30th. They decided to celebrate that said occasion for a weekend in Prague. It was it was quite delightful. But when I decided to start texting you, I was swimming in a sea of pills. <laughs> I was pickled. Never have I ever drunk so much Pilsner in all my time. And I've been around well enough. Wow. Wow. I, I sent some, I looked back in the group chat. <laughs> yeah. The producer James got axed out of the group. That's where you know. That's where you know it's been a good yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm philosophically ranting. <laughs> You're insulting everyone. He's just <laughs> No, but you had your high so obviously juxtaposed to Ryan's anger still at like residual anger yeah. at Scotland that he literally kicked out the producer from from, from, from our group for basically He's being my... English. He's out. <laughs> oh god. Uh, it was a beautiful yeah. thing. To, you know, you know, it's been a good night when you got to go back in and start re-adding people to groups. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Wait, Max, who who was there? Uh, yeah, name and shame. Oh, loose lips sink the ships, boys. We can't be doing that. Yeah, well, I'll tell you who wasn't there. Max Malins. I was at uh, Twickenham HQ. Ugh. Oh, God. I that. It Oh, it is fucking disgusting, isn't it? HQ, HQ. But I was at HQ with Max Malins trying to do Q&As with him in the suites whilst Italy were beating Scotland on, on the screen. And I've obviously given it big licks like, we need you lot to do us a fucking favour today like to go and win the fan slam next week. And then next minute, just look up and Italy are beating Scotland. Everyone's just cheering, like booing me in the fucking things. I'm like, oh. <laughs> He said you were killing it, mate. He said you were on fire. Yeah, it, it made for good. It made for good viewing, but it was um, it was good fun. Back at back at HQ, but uh, there was barber jackets and Chelsea boots and gilets everywhere. Do you think that's a timeless thing? Do you think I'll ever go, or do you think it will always just be there? Mark, yeah. you. I feel like you own a few barber jackets. <laughs> Would you would you would you say that'll ever disappear? How many gilets do you actually have, Mark? <laughs> enough, 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 to, enough to probably be in quite a good position to answer that, enough, but not yeah. wanting to. Uh, yeah, who knows? Hey, that said, I will say, Max, trying to get dirt on your friend Max to help Ryan because I know Mate, some of my impossible. he got nothing. I literally some of my mates were, were, were his, like teachers at school. You just assume that uh, they've got something, and he was just. Straight. He's straight as an arrow. Straight as an arrow. Not a single skeleton in his closet. Or maybe. So he has like, what's he done then? He's like picked up yeah. a kid with his with a pitchfork, or he's like buried somebody. Yeah. Like, something, something, is, something yeah. fucked up. Then, or or something will emerge that's just absolutely repressed right at the back there, just dormant. Nah, he's a good boy though, Max. Hey, nice oh, guy. Yeah, lovely chap. He's grown a great beard. Who knew that that cherub face could grow such a such uh -huh. a phonically endowed chin thing that was un unreal I was really surprised yeah yeah he's going for a midlife oh, like, also I need to ask you did you ask Monty what which tattoo is was the most painful uh, no no we, but we saw there's a very we good story it. around yeah. his tattoo that is is very uh, on point I won't, I won't give it away because it's it's worth listening to later on but the, his, his tattoos played a part in uh, Saturday's uh, revelry after the match so uh right. You know, worth yeah, worth. He was quite, yeah, he was quite honest with them the the way they celebrated after the game. Even though they've got a game coming up this weekend, he he didn't hold back and let us know that they'd enjoyed a few proseccos or lemoncellos as they do uh, <laughs> down in Italy. But oh boys, yeah, it was um it was a tough watch because I did actually get up on I I gave it the full like you know we need England to win to help us win the fan slam. And everyone's sort of like oh yeah like he's with us, but I was like you know I'd rather cut my nose off to spite my face. Gave it that one. <laughs> Fucking at you, me. Well, let's wait. Wait, oh, should we? Thank God I didn't have to do any work afterwards. That's all I say. Let's. let's I say. Should we go with? Let's start with, just to give Ryan a bit of a bit of 
kind of breathing room because it feels like every week he's ranting. So we'll go with the England Ireland match, which let's be honest, n- no one really predicted it that way. I mean, Max, you're you're going to get away with it because you did say there's always a chance, and we've got that on record with the caliber of the men. I think you spoke about, but but in your heart of hearts. You did not see that going down that way, did you, Max? I did. I yeah, I can I can honestly say I didn't, and I was glad to be surprised. What what a performance! But, but it, it, it begs the question: what 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 what, what galvanised such a distinct change? Because Ireland weren't bad. I think Simon yeah. Zebo galvanised such a distinct change. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Oh my! But the boy, that's it. Like the boys have been raging at Zeebs. Like front that stuff out there all week. Like, like so he slipped saying, you know, it'll take two red cars, and Zeebs saying it'll take three. Like people are asking for his head. They wanted him back on the podcast. Like, that is what they, they wanted the man back on it. I even do you know what? What's really funny, Max, is I sent Zeebs a voice note, sort of saying, I think you should have your say and come back on. And this is what I got back. It's quite fitting, Max. <laughs> Woo! Scotland! Italia! Italia! Arriva Dirty! That's all I got. That's it. <laughs> that is all I got back. That's all I got back from him. So he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't owning up to his his shit that he was throwing around uh, with England, Ireland. But he was happy to throw back on his one prediction he got right, which was Scotland would lose to Italy. But mate, let's let's look at it. England, like there was something that clicked. They suddenly started playing like a team possessed. Look at the like the fair Wabuso, like got his start. Outstanding, Ollie Lawrence barely touched the ball against Scotland. Like we said, he went missing. Fucking incredible, Ben Earl. In terms of his total carry meters, his total carry meters were still twenty nine more meters than the whole of Ireland's fourteen forwards put together. That's how well Ben Earl played. King Earl. It was just George Martin. Fucking just a Trojan. Where where has it been? Is it is it suddenly them clicking? Are they going to lose next week? Talk to me. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like completely. I just can't figure it out. Like what 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 was all the players that got picked brought their like domestic form from like the club onto onto the international arena? Mate, unbelievable. But yeah, that Ben Earl chat now about him not being a number eight's got to stop, doesn't it? You know, they that like yeah, he's a seven. He's playing eight. Is he though? When you do stuff like that, are you, 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 you're probably an eight. You're probably a really damn voluptuous eight. Yeah, eight said so to carry and get over the game line. And he's certainly doing that. He was, he was next level. He was fucking brilliant. So, yeah, it's, I, it's just everything so, seemed to click. And for Ireland, it was like, yeah, you're right. It didn't look like they were playing that badly, did it? They were maybe no. forced to be mistakes. But I think it was more the defence of England that, it just everything came together at, in, at one at one moment. It was just you know I mean? yeah. But sometimes it's like you get like a few visual moments that become particularly contagious, and then it's like a wildfire, and then everyone's losing their minds. You become full barbarian and just savage reincarnate, like uh, Tommy Freeman's first contact with Nash, and then it just got strange after that. And you're like, yeah, we're here, aroused, erect. Yeah, well, just just remember this. We have got a lot of South African followers, right? We've got yeah. a lot of them here. And then oh, we love them. We love them. And I love them. And I'm going to stick up for them because at HQ, again, England, you've got Furbank, you've got Danny Kerr saying, you know, what an amazing occasion to go out there and beat the best team in the world. Well, they're not. Officially, South Africa are the best team in the world. And you've got all the England players going... We beat the best team in the world. So, so when, when, they're not. So, who started that? I, was it Warburton? Who started that? Someone put it out there, and they were like, uh, "Islands still, Warburton. even even the world, even given the World Cup, they are still the best team in the world." And then you saw Victor Matfield in the comments and go, uh, "But, but, <laughs> hold up, what did they won?" I guess that is the bottom line, isn't it? Always, but it's interesting. It is interesting. 
Yeah, if, if you ask, if you ask the South Africans, yeah, it would be complete heresy. That is. Well, that's what this summer tour. That we'll see. We'll get well, a lot of answers yeah, yeah, when they yeah, do that. Tour, but in, in the world, in the world rankings, yeah. South Africa is still number one. Hmm. In they 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 back to back World Cups, right? Yeah. They are the best team in the world. And if you put Ireland up against South Africa right now in a big crunch match, I'm st- I'm still back in South Africa every single time. Ireland bottle it. No, no, but devil's advocate, <laughs> oh, they did. They played each other in the World Cup and Ireland won. Like the last time they played each other, if you're going to go with uh, you're only as good as your last game. This is also a fair. I, I, and I'm not, look, I'm not saying neither neither here nor there, you know, but. Oh, you old fence sitter, you get the splinters out of your crack, old boy. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'd say um, that is also true. Yeah, the, that's what. Who, yeah, so, so who do you think would win right now? Be pretty handy if we could just fucking put it together and organise it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what like a, a quick play. event, bright yeah, guys? Yeah. We need thirty-five thousand of you down at I don't know Ashton Gate. Now we need to fly over the South Africans. I think there would be a fucking South African contingency that would get, be fucking raring to go, but not in this fucking show, then. <laughs> They'd be over <laughs> in a heartbeat just to fucking pummel them, just to go in and tear them a new one. Um, who have Ireland got next week? Oh, Jesus, what am I doing here, yeah, Scott? Yeah. They're going to be so angry. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like Max's missus was this morning after he'd been on the piss all weekend. <laughs> Raging. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Great for right. I don't want to be the poor bastards who have to take on Ireland this week. Oh, it's us. Oh, shit. I've just remembered. Um, but let's let's go back to, to England. Let's celebrate that side. As much as I know it pains you, Ryan, but it's worth it for Max to finally see the happiness on his face around uh, around his country. But, you know, reading a lot of it, it's it, there's people speculating, and you wouldn't know unless you're inside the camp, but that they believed in that system and that it came together like against Scotland, it was like they didn't quite, they weren't quite there, hence why they made so many handling errors. Whereas this time they just sort of went and did it and believed and trusted. And then that's, and then, and then we're on fire for that day. I mean, what, what do you guys think of that? I think it was a fluke, but what do you think, Max? <laughs> you think it was a fluke? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think? You, you, because I, 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 like, I think there's been a few. Like just a few tweaks to like certain players, like obviously having Chesham and Martin, I think made a massive difference. I think they're both like very good defenders. I think having that sort of like, if you look at Martin, he's sort of like back rower slash lock. I thought he was huge, like completely invaluable in that. Like he was just, he was just rolling boys. So like once, when you've got guys like him and Underhill just clattering guys, it, it becomes quite infectious, I think. And that's what was sort of going on. I think those, these, um, it just gathered momentum and then it sort of ebbs out into the rest of the team. Oh, yeah, but equally, like you look at the numbers, right? I've got them up here. Eight to two in terms of line breaks for England. So they've got eight. Ireland only had two in terms of line breaks. Defenders beaten 25 to 18. Total passes for the team that passed the ball the most, Ireland, 163 to 118. So they beat them there. Offloads, nine to six. I mean, I think the stats in terms of England's offloads last week were barely even two or something. Handling errors, Ireland were worse off. Ireland had 13, England only have seven. Meters carried, they nearly almost doubled the amount of carries than the Irish had. In, you know, and that's the best attacking team in the world. So... Like, I know I'm joking when I say it as a fluke. It's just like everything suddenly clicked and they just the Irish were shell-shocked. And you don't see it, do you? I'll tell you who did play well. James Lowe. Fucking, yeah. like, give them part. For like, some of their tries that when they, really they got him, like, as well. that, the hands by um, Gibson Park to score that try in the corner for, with, uh, with James Lowe. They were good. But, yeah, England just, yeah. Good on you. Congrats. It's fine. It's good to see you finally turn up. But oh, oh, God, look at that. Just can't hand it out, can he? You can't just give it straight. It's just I like backhanded. Um, but how? You know that that's probably the first time in a long time where we've seen a the six two being highlighted when it goes wrong. Right? You get an injury right at the start with a back. And then you get a second back injured and then suddenly, you know, you're shifting around. Now, Conor Murray, British and Irish Lion, obviously an amazing player. But having a scrum off on the wing, moving things around like that, like how much does that actually disturb you? You know, have you guys been in a situation where you've got a lot of guys out of position? 
Yeah, but if there's a team that you think that's going to be able to deal with it, it's, it, it was probably Ireland. The, you know, the way they go, the way they play with their forwards and just go around the corner and get over the game line. But I don't think that I don't think it's that that really screwed them over. I just they just weren't getting the same sort of dominance that they usually get in their carries. England defended so well, like, they, and you could just see, like, everyone talked about it. The way that England beat Ireland, they turn up in the first twenty minutes with a bit of violence. And they did that, mm. and you saw it. Like there was a bit of there was a bit of uh, forward and back with, with both coaches, wasn't there? Yeah. The yeah. Half time. Yeah. You know yeah. what was, yeah. Did there anything yeah. come out about that? Like what was getting said? No, nah. just yeah, just speculation. Who's harder? But yeah, <laughs> too hard. North. That is. Just... I've heard that's pretty much what it was. And people are going, "Oh well, Farrell's harder than Borthwick." Who wins the fight, Max? If they're going bare knuckle, toe to toe, UFC, let's go UFC. Who wins? Oh, I think I'm going yeah. Farrell. Yeah, I'm going fast. <laughs> He's horrible. He look. He looks. Yeah, he looks. Yeah, he looked like he'd be horrible. I mean, neither of them have to worry about their noses after it because they're both absolute fucking squash potatoes. But um, it would. Uh, it would be. It would be a good old rumble. But yeah, I'm back in. I'm back in Faz as well. I'm back in. Did, did you see Faz. some of the comments though? Some were. Uh, it's. Uh, it. So some, some guy was like, "This is actually just two Northerners expressing their affection for one another." <laughs> <laughs> and then that person's getting absolutely killed underneath that <laughs> oh, and then <laughs> but hey friends of the show Ben L Ollie Lawrence really stepped up um, did a job and but and that's it after all the chat right after the first you know they were, they were, they were touted if they lost again and then lost next week they'd only have two that was four Six Nations in the bounce where they and only now, got and now win. all is now forgiven now they can win it. Is it it's so yeah. fickle, isn't it? How good, how good. But Max, is this a seminal moment for that team or is it, as Ryan said, a dash of luck and perhaps back to back to normal, back to, you know, two steps forward, a couple of steps back as well? I don't think so. It just looked too, it looked too polished, didn't it? It just looked... I think that doing something like that as a team will just complete... It should. It should buoy them, seriously. Like, they should... They should now have a bit more of an aura of confidence about what they're doing now and obviously getting that blitz defence in there. Like you could see that blitz defence like Ireland did at times pick it apart, but it was still forcing guys back on the inside, making like harder passes and it was more difficult to, to sort of get get wider. And, um, so yeah, I think I think this is a seminal moment, yeah. Like, Max, where, where, where did you... Um... Did you watch any of the rugby at the weekend? Honestly, did you? Or... No, I just put. But, but I was in. Um, I was so in. They didn't show in Prague. No, I was in this place called the pub. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got in there and there was like. I know those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard, we've heard, we've heard yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny. <laughs> well, even then, funny. the brainstorming session for naming <laughs> that 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 oh, drinking you... establishment. Max, are you tired? Do you seem a bit oh, cranky? Oh God, lads! I am. Um, let's 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 go through this, right? <laughs> Yes. Let's go, this. Let's go through this. Lads, I am Sir John Dustwell. Mate, look, today was just very difficult. Like I was I was very existential. I had to train. The training was particularly it was it was grueling enough, like it was hard. And I was, you know, when you're this age now, the hangovers tend to last a little longer. My flight was delayed. I had a severe sort of sleep deprivation. Um oh, the- did Pat could Pat sense it? Did he, like, how know. Did he know? Yeah, he's, he's yeah he's after me at the moment. So maybe he did know. Maybe. And he did know. here's another important thing: like, did you and whoever the five or six others that went to Prague mm. sit down and be like, right, boys, like we've got to make sure we man up here. We can't have any weak soldiers. You've got to fucking man up and, and don't shy away from today. Cause- oh, mate, you know that's the rule, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. As an OG of training hungover, you know that's the rule. No yeah. one pulls out with man flu. No one has fake injuries. You get through that session and collide. Like, that's that's always been the way. Anyone who does that, mate, isn't that weird? That's like a sincere, sincere, like, insult. To the way of the rugby man, yeah. You turn up and you, if you and it, don't back it up after a bender at training. Yeah, don't don't turn up at all. That is, to, yeah, there's a few there's a few boys I know that are, will uh, like Sammy Johnson. He was a nightmare. He would go on the benders right, but then on a Monday just like oh, I'm sick, mate. I'm fucking sick. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, that is appalling. <laughs> no, I just, that is. Oh, I hate that. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, not or just not come in. I mean, like, you can't just not come in. <laughs> you can't just not come in. No, I had it. Uh, I, had, I was at this, the place called the the pub, right? Pub. Yeah, the pub. yeah. It's like a chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, right. Yeah, go, on, go, easy, on, go on, go on, go on, go I'll be Pinocchio. You be Geppetto. Pull my strings, Daddy. But anyway, it has like the uh, the tankard right there, and you just keep serving yourself and on. And then on the big screen, it like your table gets put up to how many pints you're doing. Anyway, we got, nice. yeah, we got we got there after like we got there, and there was a, a rugby team on a social right, and they they identified a few of us, and so then I was getting chanted to. We were getting like chanted to drink all the time. Bloody hell, it was a, it was wild. But it gets you in quick. Yeah. No, I've never seen Max have a drink. Neck minute. <laughs> 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 Max have a drink. No, no, no. no it all gets weird quick. And then I've got my phone on, just watching the game in in, in this sort of haze. What? And you, you're peaking at this point, like peak peak intoxication, a nice amount because it was. It was day one and your body's sort of acclimatized to all the alcohol from the night before because the night before you probably got it completely wrong. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Prima Nocte. Really oh, yeah. The virginal day of the benders, usually the worst one. That's where most people get it wrong. The next day, day two is always better than day one because you now your liver's now sort of like, yeah, I'm ready for it. And so, so that, that, was the, um, that was the day. But yeah, I did watch it, but obviously it wasn't um, with a... Uh, with a sober eye, but it was great. It was great. Crowd. Next time you go, can I come? Mate, I would actually love that, but I'd also worry about where we'd end up. But I'm so down. I okay. just wouldn't come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, like, obviously, we mentioned it last week, we mentioned it again, but um, we had a very good night with Alfie, and that's where episode 30, where did it go? It's the, the, the mystery. Yeah. Where did it go? It's but the mystery boys, episode. Boys, I've heard, I've heard from Alfie since, and uh, he, he's alive. I can, I can confirm he's alive. I've been worried about him, but he's finally messaged me back, and I've got some stuff to tell you, but we'll, uh, we'll get into that. <laughs> well, um, one more thing before we move on from um, the England game. Mm. Should they? Because I saw the very funny thing that Joe Marler put out saying, boys, 92 tests and zero points, you selfish pricks, because they passed it back to Marcus Smith, and he's dropped the goal. If, if they had scored a try which they had the advantage and they should have gone for a try because they were five metres out they could have won next weekend and won the tournament but at the moment all Ireland need is a losing bonus point and they win the Six Nations so looking back should Joe Marlow have got that ball should yeah they should they should have tried to score a try and I know I know they're, they're about to beat Ireland second best team in the world you're welcome South African fans but um, they're just about to beat them and they've, they've seen it. Like they've got the opportunity, they've got the, the advantage. Yes, the, the, the right mindset is quick, stick the three points over, take your chance, chance your arm, then we don't have to take the three points off the, off the cone. But if they had scored a try, they could have been going into this weekend with it in their own destiny. One with a bonus point and still one, but they didn't. No, I think that win in itself is more valuable almost. What, the win in the Six Nations? Not- I don't know. I feel like in the short term. You know what I mean by what I'm saying? I do. I do. And I, it doesn't cross your mind. And again, it's things like when we had Mitch on a few weeks ago and we were saying, you know, of course you weren't thinking about what mm. was happening there because you're chasing after that ball. But... Hold up. Let me get this analysis out. In the fucking... Yeah, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, fucking hell, if mm. they got the bonus point win, which they should have probably tried for because they had penalty advantage they would have been in a lot better position going into this last weekend. It's crazy to think, isn't it? Or, or, okay, well, uh, wait, just as a slight iteration of that, do you think Marcus Smith is going, I'm not fucking, I'm yeah, not having the one know. where my guts are in uh, in my throat and in my ass trying to kick the winning goal? <laughs> You're like, I'll just fucking go for this one and then it's in. Maybe, but That's then, it, then if he wasn't like in that, that, he's to blame. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just an interesting one, boys. Listen, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a lot of facts and a lot of stats today because I just want to try and waste as much fucking time talking about this match <laughs> than the next one. <laughs> <laughs> also, just uh, just to finish off that last bit, though, Wells. Like, let's be fair. Like, Ireland were, you know, when James Lowe scores that try, most people are thinking, oh. England have done, you know, they've had, they've done really well, right? Been brilliant, but yeah. this is the order of things, you know, this is the way. And and yeah. you're basically like, right. 
Okay, and at the point where, yeah, just before the penalty uh, is given, where they will have a, sh they could have a shot at goal. You're still thinking like, fuck, Ireland is still leading. You're in the red. Anything? Could, oh, a hundred percent. You're looking at it, and I was look, I was looking at it like those glasses that Max are wearing, like absolute blurry as you like, because I'd had a few swift ones. But yeah, you're you're in that stadium thinking. Ireland are going to come away and find a way to get the ball back to win it back and it was Ty Byrne wasn't it he went for the ball he goes over the top you look at that and you go well he's actually yeah might have had one hand on the ground but the ref is shouting at him you've lost it you've lost it he should have just let go and, and they might have had a, another opportunity to find it somewhere else so you do look at it and think I was I was at the time thinking this this is going to be Ireland finding a way to turn it over and win but they got the they got the penalty advantage. So, um, what what was it like? Yeah, but what, what was game? it like? What, though, what when, um, boys, no, it was fucking like for once. It wasn't just a corporate hospitality fucking suite. It was like people were going mental. More the like the Irish as well. You could just because they oh. were obviously going mad to try and get the ball back. They were fucking screaming, and there was two guys. I was actually. Um, very tactfully sat in the Breitling box. Oh, yeah. I love and, that. The, uh, so you were in the corporate bit, just to double check after what you just said. Yeah, cool. <laughs> What's yeah. that face? What's that face? Breitling. <laughs> What's that meant to be? Bright, Breitling and that watch. Like, oh, that's um, weird. I got my watch. But um, there's two Irish guys. And, and in there, you're obviously meant to be pretty you know it's it's work i think is what it felt like like everyone was looking at them but they're like yeah fucking fucking <laughs> 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 and you could tell everyone's like oh my god look at these two but they were furious absolutely furious like like they should have been but um it was it, you know what the atmosphere was pretty cool it was good to be there it was um yeah it was amazing right Let's now turn our Fijian attention. Fijian and Drua. And Drua, yeah. <laughs> to the Drua. Well, hey, big it up to our Fijian brothers. How good was that result? I can't believe you've done it to me again. Shit. Tosso and Drua. Tosso and Drua. Great result, though, right? Yeah, very, very good result. In Lal Toka. Oh, my God. How gush. I, I, we need to get over there. Let's just go there. All right, then. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening. Um, that is the, Come on. That's the end of the show. We'll pass you on to the uh, uh, the interview with Monteoni. See you later. No, 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 no. Let's absolutely hang, draw, and quarter Ryan Wilson. Max Leave, over to you for the hubris destruction of... Willisoni himself. But, but why? Like I like I did what everyone else said thought. You thought the same, Max. You thought Scotland were going to win. I, did, I actually did. You're right. I did think that. Boys, you both destroyed me, by the way. Yeah, when I said, did you not watch last week? Did you not watch their game against France? 14 points. And you both went, all right, mate, you don't really know rugby because you didn't play it. You're not a professional <laughs> like us. And then you're like, yeah. uh, literally, they had a red card. Know, yeah. Fucking mystic mega over it. What are you like? The, the, the fucking you are now. The, 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 we need to, we need to get on our, our oh fantasy team. Should we look at them instead? No, <laughs> just get right, Rock, Max. Come on, dig into Ryan. He's done it. <laughs> I did. I did yeah, do it. I did do it. I was gonna. I was gonna bake a pie and write on it and stuff and serve it to you through the camera. But but, but the what, demons have been flying. So you're not? like, no, yeah. I just didn't have time. Just, just, just getting like, hugs from Lauren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just been in the Tartarus fighting my own sort of battles. No, no, no. Listen, we weren't quite what we've been, and it's uh, as I said already. When you say weren't amazing. quite, how not? Do you know what? I, I, and we said it with Monty earlier I, I actually think Italy deserved it the way they defended the way they played like I genuinely believe I, like I was I even text Mitch Meyer and said mate I, I, I was like that was unreal it was awesome to watch it was an amazing game like I had to watch it back because obviously I didn't get to see it properly but mm. I've watched it back and looking at the game I was even excited the last five minutes and as I said right at the beginning if you're a rugby fan or if you're one of these people who go oh rugby's dead fuck actually that game was so good. It was such a good game to watch. And there were some huge, huge moments. Like the bench that came off of Scotland didn't really quite have the impact that you probably wanted it to. I think Sam Skinner came straight on, gave away a penalty. The Italians knock it over and then, then they're in front. Um, loads of penalties after each other. What what was um, Monty saying? I think they only gave away three or four penalties in the whole game. Which, 
it, it, you that you can't find a foothold into the game if you only give away three or four penalties yeah, good, yeah. in an international match they kick the ball more than Scotland remember Scotland kick the ball normally more than any other team that's Gregor Townsend's philosophy if we kick the ball more we win they actually ended up kicking the ball more they were putting the ball in behind they tried to put the ball in behind Scotland and trap them in there and they did it and then when we got moments of magic from Duhan McVan de Merver, what does he normally do? He normally goes around the outside, but the Jack Russell that is Ange Kapowitzo has already chopped him down earlier on, David and Goliath for what? And so then you've got doubt in your mind. And the big fella would usually it's try and round him and give yeah. the ball back inside to Ali Price, but yeah. he doesn't. He tries to go inside, Ali goes under, and you butcher a two-on-one chance, which could have won you the game. Suddenly things aren't going and then you doubt yourself. And that's what happened. And I've been there. I've been there against Italy when we've been in those situations and we had Dunky Weir get us out of the shit. But I've also never lost to Italy. But I've seen Scotland, whilst I was playing for Scotland, get to that moment. I think it was at Murrayfield as well, um, a, f a fair few years back. But they lost to Italy uh, at home. And once you start doubting yourself, so there is that doubt. Scotland didn't take their chances. They weren't as clinical, but you've got to give Italy their, their due. They were fucking good and they deserved, they deserved the win. And actually watching it back and looking how much it meant to them, it, is, it was pretty cool. The Italians, we know now, like they're, built, they're building something special. You said it, Max, to be fair. You said it, they're an 80-minute team. You said it last week. They're an 80-minute team now. So There's also like a legitimate emergence of some premier talent in that team now, like some real killers, especially given... The under twenties who are coming through, they're also spanking some of the other teams. So it's, it's looking, it's looking rosy for Italy. Like you said already, Menoncello, Capowuzzo was like just the man possessed. Brex has played pretty much every test. Yeah, um, he was, over the last he was, thirty-six yeah, tests or something. And same, same with Lamaro. Like he's been involved in pretty much every Italian thing. So these guys are just getting so much game time. They're getting some. Uh, really good young talent coming through and Shay. even like the young son hero heroes like um, Lucchese he's up there with most turnovers uh, I think by by a long way in, in the in the championship uh, Federico Ruzza I've always classed him as one of yeah, the best Ruzza, there. yeah he's he's very good isn't he and then look at them they're scrum max they're yeah, scrum Bichetti, like mate. The mate I'm telling you that guy's special especially around the park as well just metronome ticker on him um, hey, it's looking good. It's looking very there good. There you are. So, Mark, Michelle I'm sorry. I'm not giving you what you want, but it, 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 it's true. Like, I genuinely, you look at it and you think, fucking hell, but what what a like, opportunity Scotland have thrown away. And uh, there's a lot of chat fr flying around now saying, you know, Gregor Townsend, we want his head. And you're like, oh, how fickle is rugby? <laughs> Once again, it's like just flipped on its head. Suddenly people want him out when we're going, best Scotland team ever. We're playing so well. We lose to a really good Italian team who have been due a win because they've been that close and they're standing games and suddenly everyone's going, oh, t Townsend out. <laughs> well, gents, we usually do this bit at the end of the show, but just want to do a big shout out to our sponsor that are Wolf Craig Distillers. They've been with us all the way and we just want to say a huge thank you for looking after us, being with us and supporting us. We wouldn't be here without them. We're um, a, a fair number of shows in and we've been going all right. So, Max, if people want to pick up a wonderful bottle of gin or whiskey, where do they go? Wolfcraig.com. Have you ever been on wolfcraig.com, Max? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do have, though? Do you know what I do have? What? A really nice gilet and a really nice hat and a very, very nice bottle of whiskey. Well, there you have it. So head over to Wolf Craig Distillers, wolfcraig.com and grab it. Mark, where are we going next? Well, firstly, urge all of our listeners as always. Max, what do they need to do? You need to click and subscribe to our wonderful YouTube channel where you can get your extra rugby content where we get unhinged and weird and talk about all things oval-shaped. Get amongst it. Subscribe. You can find us uh, on YouTube on the More or Nothing show. Yeah. At More or Nothing, at More or Nothing. So hit that up. Subscribe also to the podcast. You're probably you're listening to it now, but then, you know, don't take the person's phone next to you on the tube. But if you see that the subscribe opportunity is there, hit it. Hit it hard. Hey, boys, I've been doing it. I've been passing the pod. I did it 
right? I, I told you at last week I did it at a wooden spoon event when I did a video and it went out. So they've all they've all now subscribed. So I think we've gone up. And then I did it again at HQ. I was in there and I basically said, "Oh, I don't know why I'm here. I must be because sure. of the podcast." So I just said, "Follow us on More or Nothing." I was like, "Go on, get your phones out," and told them that we are More or Nothing. So quite a few people came up after me. And, oh, I listened to the podcast. Was, that was good fun. So pass the pod, people. Fucking pass yeah. the pod. Join the family. We love you. Join our fantasy family as well for the final round. It's going to be incredibly exciting. But even more exciting, we have Italian superstar Monty Iwani now in a chat. Whilst Max was trying to exercise the, the anxiety demons in a, in a training session, Ryan and I uh, caught up with the Italy winger for his take on a phenomenal weekend and what a win it was for them at the Stadio Olimpico. Here's Monte Ioane. Well, we are delighted to be joined by Italy winger Monte Ioane. Uh, have you recovered yet from what was a sensational, sensational Saturday of rugby for you guys? Yeah, I wouldn't say 100% recovered. I'm still recovering from the night after, to be honest. Uh, from the <laughs> night of the game. So, yeah, pretty banged up at the moment. <laughs> oh, what a match though, mate. Like, and what scenes. Uh, listen, I've sent a few messages because we had Mitch on, was it last week or the week before? Yeah. Um, and we were chatting to him and I actually sent a message saying, mate, you boys deserved it. Like, that was incredible. But what was it like? Like, out on that field, Monte, it must have been ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, look, in all honesty, it was pretty tough out there. Um it's pretty satisfying to finally reap the rewards. You know, it's been it's been a long time coming, and uh, I think we were just over, just being so close to almost winning games, and then because a lot of the games that we were almost close to winning, it was like just crucial things that were just letting us down, especially our discipline. And on the weekend, we only conceded five penalties, and you know, um, mate, just to do something like that and come away with a win was. Yeah, you can't beat it. Can't beat it, especially at home in front of a, a, a sellout stadium. It was awesome. Fucking hell! That well, that's it. Like when you go back to it, look at the stats. Like that's that's what everyone always talks about in national rugby. You need to make sure you're not giving away penalties, and that's how you boys are staying in the games, being a bit more clinical. And everyone's talking about it. The way you stayed in the game against England and probably should have come away with more. Obviously, the France game, which should have won. Yeah, and especially with what happened at the end, and then that game, which you finally get over the line. You're yeah. staying in games now. You're staying in games and you're staying in there. And Italy have old, like, let's not, we won't shy away from it. it you get to the last 20 and then you sort of fade away. Whereas now things have suddenly changed. Yeah. And it, it, it's honestly satisfying to see, like, just, just coming off that field and just, oh, you, you could see all the boys, like, the emotions were through the roof. Like, even myself, I was crying like a baby and <laughs> I don't cry much, but. Uh, I couldn't help it, you know. I was just so so stoked for the boys and and just everything that we've been building over the last like three four years. Mons, that's um that's the moment though when your message sees you crying on the field after winning the rugby. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you didn't cry at any of the children's birthday. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, oh mate, yeah, she was. Oh, I, I honestly, when I seen her, she, she was like even saying, she's like, I've never seen you cry and you just want to come off that field. I was like, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> it's the emotion of it. It's like the yeah. investment into it. And like you've been so invested in Italian rugby. Like you, yeah. you came over to Benetton in what, 20, 2020? And like, you put like yeah. it's, it's mad, isn't it? It's the investment you put into it. And when you get so close and you finally get it. But yeah, you get ag off the missus saying, you've never <laughs> Yeah, you know, without a doubt. But yeah, I, I did come over a couple of years ago and it was even the same with Benetton. You know, we doing the hard work and there was just a lot of, you know, like Italian rugby has always been there. I wouldn't say always been there. Over the last four years, we, we have built something absolutely amazing. But it was just just getting small things right, like the, the, the our penalties. And, you know, as you said before, against England, we scored more tries than them, but we conceded more penalties and they were able to kick more points than us. Um, against France, same thing. And finally, you know, we, we got what we deserved. So, Monty, describe those last few moments. And, and, you know, we could sense it. You're watching it even on the TV and you're sensing the crowd is there and, and, and the backing is there. And all of those years, I can't remember how, I think it was 13 years or whatever since you've actually won at home. 
uh, in the Six Nations. Summarise that for us into that actual feeling of those last few moments ticking away. Yeah, you know, like obviously we had that, there was that, um, I think it I think because I think the, the last action when it, I think it went like two minutes, of, two minutes or so, two or three yeah. minutes or something like that. There's 22 phases or something from Scotland. Yeah, yeah, 22 phases or something like that. But in the past, in all honesty, I would have just been like, oh, fuck, here we go again. And then, <laughs> uh, it, honestly, because I've been in that situation numerous times, with, especially with like with the Italian team and with Benetton, I've just been in that situation so many times. And it's like you kind of know what's going on. Like, we're, we're bound to give away a penalty here. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, mate. It's like we're bound to give away a penalty here, and then they're going to kick the touch, and then I don't know, they're going to maul or something like that. But um, going into that second half, because we were down, I think it was twenty-two ten or something like that. But just the whole time, even in that last action, like I could feel everyone just kind of felt that we we had it. And funnily enough, you know, like the last couple of training set leading up to that game, the whole week we had been practicing finishing off the game and, and even ending it. And like, obviously you never know what's going to happen in the game, but we just had to prepare ourselves. And it was just one of those things. And I could feel the energy from the boys as well. And they could feel it as well. It was just, so we kicked off. Well, I think they, kicked, oh no, it was us that kicked off. And I was just like, we just got to hold them from here. And, you know, there was, a, there was, there was so much confidence from all the boys, especially myself. And yeah, it was wild. It was wild. I think I made like four or five tackles in that in that one sequence, and I was like, "Oh, mate, I make I make way too many tackles against Ireland. I made three fucking against France. I made one one tackle, and I'm I'm fucking making five and one in one sequence. I was like, this is too many for me." But Mark, that's it because you you say you boys could feel it. You could see it. You could see it on the TV because like Ange Capuzzo was like a fucking man possessed. You were flying out of line trying to chop people's legs away. We Ange is just like I've seen it back. He's just like bouncing around, just running everywhere, trying to tackle right. everyone. People are just, but like you said, it like the old times, it would be like give away a penalty and then you'd be you'd be in trouble. But you were so clinical, and even the moment where Finn, it's like I think there's like thirty seconds left in the clock, and he does that little crossfield to Carl yeah. Stang, and you're like bloody hell, Finn, that's balls of steel, and it's on yeah. the money, and you're like. Oh, hold on a minute. Scotland are pulling this back. Scotland are pulling this back. And I was thinking, this is it. This is where they come through. But you could see it. You could see the energy. And um, fair play to you boys. Like, it was uh, it was some performance. Some performance. Yeah. And, and well, mate. Monty, it was interesting because when we had um, Michele, when we had Mitch uh, Lamaro on, he... You know, there was a couple. There was just a bit of needle in you and right, right. Do you remember about like you know, obviously we're we're gonna play for the big fans Grand Slam up in Dublin and all this, and you just sensed he was uh, he was great, but he was you know we're we're gonna be bringing something, and there was a, a, an element of confidence rather than uh, you know sort of outright confrontation. It was more you know we've got this game, and and did you sense that in the week that you guys? felt like that this was the game that you were going to go at and that there was going to be a win at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, obviously, you never, go, you never go into the game with oh, wanting to lose. Um, with this squad, you know, we, 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 I don't know, we just had this, we kind of been talking loads about um, how we were going to approach different games. Um, and the confidence from the boys as... I'd say it's a quiet confidence that, that, that the squad has here. You know, you know, like we don't, we're not trying to throw everything out there, but you could feel and you could see, especially from the young lads like the likes of Min and Cello, mate. That guy's gone. He's he is a I don't fuck. I don't even know what he is. He's just he's not human. But <laughs> that kid is just, he, and he's a quiet kid as well. And he's just going out in that field and just throwing everything, banging up his shoulders. And then you've got. The, like youngsters like Lewis, Lewis Liner, and then you got Ange, who's he's another kid who's also possessed, as you said. Like he's he's taking on the big man, uh, uh, doing, big man. yeah, <laughs> and he's not afraid either. But uh, no, what, that's uh, you're right though. But that is that is one of the most important moments I reckon in the game. Is there was one earlier on where Big Dewey tries to go around Ange, and he's like a little Jack Russell going at his heels. Louis Liner's coming over, but like getting him into touch. Yeah, that I reckon puts in we call him Dwayne on here, but big Dwayne's head because you can see that moment where it makes the break down the side and he doesn't try to go around Ange because he's almost like, Oh, he might put me into touch. And there was a, almost a sense of doubt in 
do Harry Van der Merwe's yeah. mind like, listen, I'm going to get put into touch by the wee man here because usually he would have gone to this and put and given it to Ali Price on the inside. Like, yeah. what a mistake that was. But that's it. You boys have put the doubt in and it's it's moments like that from earlier on when you see Ange Kapowitz say, what, mate, I reckon he's a fucking third of the size of Duran, isn't he? And he, but he's got oh, the fucking heart of a lion, the wee bloke. Yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, mate, I don't know, he's just an absolute fucking crazy kid that, that he just he throws everything even at training <laughs> you're, you're, only, you're only 29 and you're one of the old blokes in in the in yeah, that crazy. You're, you're I, I feel fucking i feel fucking old i just said <laughs> i said anywhere else in, anywhere else in the in the world I, i'd feel young but just playing along these side uh these young boys it's it's crazy and so we, spoke to, we spoke to Mitch about like what those foundations are getting put in place. And sorry, Mark, I know you want to stay on the game for a bit, but like the foundations that have been been put in place, because you look at look at the twenties game, the Italian twenties team the night before put thirty points on on the Scotland twenties uh, team. So you've got the youngsters, you've got the foundations in in Bologna, and and a man that um, is at Glasgow now, obviously Franco Smith put those in place. I've, I was looking through some stuff. It's weird how many... Because Dave Rennie was the one that signed you at Chiefs, wasn't he? Yeah. And then Franco Smith, you would have played under him at Benetton? Uh, no, I, I came the year after or maybe right, okay. two years after. But, but yeah. he would have been involved in Italian rugby. But he, yeah, he's, they, he's the one who gave me my first cap. Yeah. It's and like, what is it with Italian rugby at the moment? There's something brewing. There's something brewing, isn't there? Even at a young level, like the young, youngsters at under 20s. Yeah. Like... I don't know, like I just, uh, cause I had, like I said, I had come here a couple of years ago and um, mate, I was actually quite surprised. Like you won't know Italian rugby until you actually play with these boys. And there, there's a lot of talent individually and you get the, obviously you can see it in the likes of Minicello, Paolo Garbisi. We, Italian people, I don't think they're any different. Like if you look at them genetically, I think they're built exactly like the French. Like genetically, they're just there's there's no difference. You couldn't tell the difference. And then you get obviously the the, the only downfall is there's only two professional rugby teams there. But and these twenties have always been talented. I think they just needed the guy the right guidance. And then you had the likes of obviously somebody like um, uh, Franco Smith and Kieran Crowley that came and changed Italian rugby. And then obviously they had brought in a couple foreigners, the likes of myself, and then there was other guys. And then it just kind of, I guess, from from there, they were just we were able to, I'm not going to give credit to myself because there was a lot of other um, foreign boys, but they were able to just, you know, teach these, these guys and give them a bit of guidance. And then from anything else that were filtering into the, to the um, from the young blokes like Min and Cello coming into the big squad, he kind of like, okay, so this is, this is where it needs to be at. But the 20s have always been great. The 20s have always been great, but then... Like I said, because there's only two professional teams, they come into the squad and there's only a handful of them that, that, that can get into that space and then the rest, they get stuck in the top 10, which is quite sad. But I think there just needs to be a better system. But whatever it's working at, is going on at the moment, it is, like you said, it's brewing. Um, hopefully they can think of a longer, like a long-term plan, but we'll just have to see. How much confidence did you guys take from that performance against... France and you know it's worth noting that Mitch refused to blame the officiating or anything he actually blamed himself for not being involved in that conversation and is that like a new mindset for you guys where rather than oh we, we were close nah, it's more okay we came here and we got something and we should have probably got the win but now on to the next we definitely got a lot of confidence from that game but we have, we've also learned, learned from our mistakes in the past, whereas leading up into the World Cup, we thought we were going to also do amazing against France that game as well. Um, we had been building something up until that World Cup and we played well against Japan. And then uh, I can't remember who we had um, in the two first games. I think it was some, Uruguay, then oh, Namibia. Obviously, they're not, they're not higher teams, but... Then we were going into the French game with full of comp. Oh, the New Zealand game with full of confidence. <laughs> but we got, yeah, we got absolutely battered, absolutely battered. And then threw that game in the bin. Same thing. We we're just like, you know, we'll throw that. That's not us. Came against France. Same thing. And it hurt us a lot. It hurt us a lot. So 
in the past, we also have, we have had games where we played absolutely amazing and then had so much confidence going into the next game and just got completely battered. But now it's just like we're just about sticking to our processes yeah. and staying grounded and, you know, not getting too ahead of ourselves. Because um, the same thing against England, obviously I'm, I'm not going to compare other teams to Ireland, but we we couldn't do it. It was 36-0 and from us that was very disappointing. But we went into that game with full confidence and then just came out the other end. So... Tell me this, Monts. Did you um? Did you have a bit of a panic? You need to have a word with Garbisi and and sort out that kicking tee. Because <laughs> fuck, mate. I was I was like, fuck, not again, mate. Yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. On? Explain what first first kicker game was. It ball falls off the tee. Yeah. yeah I, look, I don't know anything about kicking, but I was like, I said to one of the boys, I was like, fuck, that guy needs to change his ball placement. <laughs> <laughs> And then, there must be something in the board because then later on, the biggest kick of the game, he obviously slots that one to take your boys like just out of touching distance. But there's a huge moment in the game and the ref gets the spot wrong and goes, oh, sorry, mate, I'm going to have to move yeah. back. Stop the clock. And you're like, no, not again. Yeah. Not again. Obviously, as a Scotland fan, I was going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you're like, oh, but he, he had balls of steel, that one, and, uh, and slotted it. But yeah, have a word with him. Maybe has he got a few... Boys got into her about that and said, "Listen, sort your sort your shit out." No, honest, no, honestly, none of the boys haven't have been saying much to be honest. Because obviously, the game against France, which that was a crucial kick, oh. we just we're like, okay, we're, we're not going to put the world on his shoulder, so we'll just just get we just left him to himself because we could see he was absolutely gutted. But yeah, I'm probably going to have to get him to him, get into him this week. <laughs> yeah, get a new kicking team bloody hell that was stressful man what was the atmosphere though after that and having to fly home and all of these things and how did it feel yeah it was a bit of confusion uh, the boys didn't really know how to feel um, obviously like we were disappointed but then we were also happy because we drew with France but it was like you couldn't get a more perfect situation where you get the penalty right at the end of the so you know, in the perfect world, we'd slot that and, you know, happy ending, but we didn't get it. And then it was just, we went away into the, into the uh, change rooms. Obviously, every, like I said, everyone was stoked for it, for the result, but yeah, there was just that bit of confusion amongst us. Like I didn't even know how to feel. It was, it was rushed. And to be honest, not many of the boys even celebrated because we were just that down from it. Yeah, it's difficult. Isn't it? Whereas opposed to this weekend, we at the art cafe. Is that yeah? It was, was that your <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, it was my first time getting in. I couldn't. I couldn't even get in. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled to get in because they go, oh, because I, I arrive um, after all the boys, and they go, um, first of all, because uh, there was a massive line to get in, and I was, and I cut through the side, and I said, oh, I'm actually with the. We got a table inside, and they go, who are you? And I was like, I'm with the the, the national team. And the guy goes, no, nah, there's, there's, there's no one in here. And I go, oh, that's quite funny. There's Texas. Anyways, the guy goes away for like 10 minutes, comes back and he goes, no, you can't get in because your neck tattoos. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, you, really? just, you, you just won at Stadio Olimpico. This is the Art Cafe, Mark. Good yeah, spot yeah. in Rome. Very yeah. good spot in Rome. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't, Art, Art Cafe. they wouldn't let me in. And I was like, you know what? Never mind. I was like, I'm just going to go home anyway because it was – I was tired and I was like, and we were at, a, we were at a, another bar beforehand and it was 1.30 or 2 a.m. And I was like, yeah, don't worry. I was like, never mind, I'm going. Anyways, I was on my way. I was just about to leave and then some other guy notices me and then he goes, where are you going? I was like, going home, can't get in, blah, blah, blah. Then he goes, oh, no, all the boys are inside. And I was like, yeah, I know they're inside, but the guy's not letting me in. He's not letting me in because of my neck tattoos. He's like, no, 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 it's fine. You guys got to – because obviously there's a Marco Riccioni who's also covered in tattoos. But, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. So anyways, the guy, I ended up getting in, but I think my mood was already ruined by, ruined from the first right. 15 well, minutes of trying your, to get in. Maybe it's your dodgy Italian, mate. How is your Italian? Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, real reason. Yeah, I probably. Be, I, the, I, I would go completely off topic here, but obviously a Fijian mother, am I right? Yep, yep, yep. So, so you're enjoying my Fijian commentary? Uh, oh, mate, I was around. laughing at that. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. And and another weird one, middle name, Wilson. There you have it. 
Yeah, fuck. Couldn't tell you. I have no idea what the fucking where that came from. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be Willie Sonny. Willie Sonny. Willie Sonny. Come Willie on, Sonny. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Sonny. <laughs> Willie Sonny. <laughs> Thank you, Willie Sonny. <laughs> oh class. Oh, so good. So good. I can't believe that they wouldn't let you in the fucking old. I know castle. how. Like I'm with them. I'm in yeah, there. Right, with Right, oh, and it, it was embarrassing because, it, like, I could, there was all the young boys going, "Oh, come on, Tini, can we, can we have a photo?" And then, and this security guy, and I'm like, I'm just on my phone, just I can't get in, but I'm trying to act like that I'm that I'm just like waiting for someone. But little, <laughs> <laughs> little do they know I can't even fucking get in the club. <laughs> Mate, that place, by the way, we got in there after a game. I think yeah. it was. I've, I've got a feeling it was the one where Dunkey Weir slotted that drop goal. Just we we like nearly lost last play of the game. Slotted the drop goal. And we went down to the art cafe. Mate, Gary was like, "Yeah, don't worry. There's your table. Help yourself." Boys kicking into it. Made out as if everything was free. It was me and Dave Denton. Four thousand euro bar bill. Oh, <laughs> And they were like, everyone had left. Me and Dent on oh, the dance floor. Oh, no. Like that. Collared by the, the bouncers. Probably the same bloke. He was like, you need to pay your bar bill. I'm like, fuck off. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, no, probably the same same bouncer, for sure. <laughs> what was the mood in the bar beforehand, though? Oh, mate, that, that bar was it was the first time that I had been there. Um, it, it was actually packed crazy with all the Scottish. And honestly, all the Scottish fans were class, man. They, uh, they were really awesome. They just came up to all the boys and just saying, yeah, you know what? You guys should have won. Definitely, you deserve that, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was wild. It was wild, but it couldn't really get too too messy just because uh, obviously can't not, we didn't want to really get too crazy in front of the public eye, but that's all right. Um, and then, you got yeah, a big one next end. week as well. You got a big one next yeah. week. And I'm guessing the Scotland boys weren't out because they would have been... Um, they would no. have been tough. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I, I didn't see any of them out, so... Who's the best fun on the on on the lash? Just uh, out of the squad, out of interest. Well, we've got a lot of young boys, so I can't. I haven't really been out with these boys. Like I've just been, oh, maybe uh, maybe Min and Charlie. Maybe he's a bit crazy. Likes to take his top off in the nightclub <laughs> all the time. <laughs> a, couple of those, a couple of those young props that I've seen them. I've seen them oh, out. In, actually, uh, in maybe, Italy. maybe, yeah, maybe. Oh, a lot of them have calmed down now. <laughs> How has it been having uh, Lewis Liner? Uh, we discussed this again with with Mitch about how he's gone. You know, he's he was a top try scorer in the Prem uh, a couple of seasons ago, and you're like, and he's he's actively choosing to represent Italy, and that that was actually quite a statement of intent. Um, how's it been with him slotting in, and and how 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 do you feel? I mean, he's 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 a hundred percent right now. So yeah, no, it he's class, absolute class. You know, I didn't expect. He's always wanting to learn, and even just. Uh, he's always asking questions, and he, the way he's he's um, integrated himself into the squad. Honestly, he, first day training, he's like doing like line breaks and everything, and we're like, okay, a right, right, couple of flips here and there. <laughs> and he's, at, he's on he's on my opposite wing, and I'm like, fuck's sake, this kid. And then he was, <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, no, but honestly, and then um, mind you, coming into the into the Six Nations, he I think he he wasn't playing as much footy. As he would have liked to, not sure for whatever reason. So he was a little bit nervous going into the games because he kind of felt like he wasn't ready. But mate, from game one, you could see the kids. Kid looks like a natural. So yeah, yeah, but not that good. I mean, he's 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 going for your place. So you got to be careful. He'll be. That's he'll be right. He's fourteen, number fourteen. I'm, yeah. I'm on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the other side, mate. Yeah. On the other side. Sorry, uh, Andrew, you deal with him, mate. You deal with him. <laughs> and um, yeah, listen, you, you did because you, you, I'm right to say you were at Stade Francais for a little bit, weren't you? Yeah, I was there for like two years just on acad- in, in academy. But Gonzalo wasn't the coach then, there. No, then, he was. Did? He was. Oh, really? So there's a, there's a synergy there, right? So he must have been, your, well, so you were in the academy and, and the head coach for Italy now, Gonzalo. I always get the Kisada. Kisada, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, 10 years he, later. Your, Fucking hell, that is mad. So did yeah. you chat like when when you obviously when he came back? I'm guessing he was like you were one of their kids, or did he have anything to do with bringing you into the Stade Francais? Oh, it was quite, it was quite funny going into the Stade Francais. But first of all, yeah, it was a bit funny seeing him uh, come into the national team because I was like, fuck's sake, I was like this guy. I, I haven't seen him in in years. And anyways, it was going into the Stade Francais. Um, 
academy, they, I was just a, a kid. They had no idea. Um, they had no idea who I was. Um, because what happened was my uncle had a fallout with the Queensland Reds and I was at the Queensland, I was in the Queensland Reds Academy at the time. He had exactly. a fallout. Yeah. So he had a fallout with them and uh, he slapped the president. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 yeah that, te- that tends to make you move on clubs. <laughs> and anyways, he goes, I'm leaving the club and I'm taking my nephew with me. So I had no say in it. And um, he pretty much just said, you're coming to France with me. So he sorted out a deal, like a two for one deal. <laughs> yeah, it was literally, and, and me and Gonzo still speak about it to this day, like where it was, they were like, they, they signed Digby and then Digby was like, I'm not coming unless my nephew comes. So that's, oh, yeah. And so then Gonzo was like, so obviously, if you know the way the, the GIF system works in, in, in France, for them it was perfect because obviously it was like, it was another kid to bring into the GIF system. Uh, so yeah, that, and that's how I ended up in Stade Francais and then, yeah, it's been all—it's been wild from there. So that, that is oh, that's, oh, that's oh that's the salmon coming out in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, it's the slap. Wait, oh, wait, I'm telling you, there's, I've, there's been loads of times where he's almost where he slapped a lot of players, and I've seen him almost slap one of the the, the backs coach at Stade Francais as well. <laughs> Uh, hang, on, hang on, Monty. How were you received, yeah. right? Ultimate nepotism. Like, you know, Digby's sort of b- b- buy one uncle, get one nephew for free at, at Stade Francais. And then you're like, okay, so I'm just moving to France. Yeah, to mate, learn I, French, I, And then I'm I, just like an 18 year old kid that's just in the academy now. Yeah, it was honestly, it was, a, it was the craziest thing. Like, the move happened so quickly because I was, I had just signed, um, I was just about to sign, sorry. No, sorry. I signed to go into the wider squad with the Reds. And I think I was on holiday at that time. And then just before we were about to begin um, training, I, yeah, that happened. And then next thing you know, a month, uh, within the next two weeks, I had signed to go to Stade Francais, which was crazy. And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, man. How did he break it to you? Like, how did he, he was like, hey, Mons. We're going to France. <laughs> no, nah, mate. It was like, oh, mate, what, you're, he's like, you're not playing for them anymore. You're coming with me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like all right, all right. All right. That, is, that is such an Islander thing, though. Eh? That is, <laughs> uh, and you don't, you don't say no to the uncle. Otherwise mate, you'll exactly. Get yeah, no, of course, of course. And then the family was like, yeah, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Australian rugby is no good anyway. <laughs> 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 oh man, it's crazy though, and how like like how it all works out, you know, how it all yeah. works out and goes that way. So that's so funny that Gonzalo then will obviously speak to you now and say, you know, put it over, but it all comes back around, eh? And uh, you're doing all right, mate. You're going all right. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. let's talk uh, once about you know this weekend, really important weekend, and really setting you guys up for what could be um, one of your best finishes in years in the Six Nations. You know, I'm assuming you want more than just the one win, which is which was historically something big for you guys. Now you're like, no, we're in the mix, and you know, how do you guys feel ahead of the match in Cardiff? Yeah, the boys are, are filled with absolute confidence, even as much as I am. Um, but you know, we're trying to stay grounded, as I said. You know, stick to our processes because the easiest thing to do um, after a win, which is obviously something. Oh, this is what Gonzalo explained anyway. Because obviously we're not used to winning, <laughs> and the easiest thing to do after a, 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 an awesome win like that is to just kind of drift into the week and and you know go with the pro, uh, just I, I guess just drift along with it. But you know where we've just gone out, gotten out some of our preparation done um, this morning. Um, yeah, you know we we want to go there looking for another win. Um, we've done it before two years ago, um, which was kind of a glimpse of what was what had happened over this last uh, two years so which is awesome it was the start of a glimpse anyway and hopefully we can continue to build on from from this tournament which has been absolutely amazing for us with a draw a win and hopefully going to this game with another win i think everyone though watching 
like other other than the Welsh fans, Mark's Mark's Welsh. He claims to be Welsh, French, and English. No, not English. Not sorry, English, just Welsh and French, mate. Yeah, and it's if fine. China had a team, then he would be China. <laughs> China. <laughs> <laughs> Philippines. I, I, I think the, uh, the feeling is they want you to go down there. People want you to go down there and win. And how quickly has this fucking tournament been turned on its head with like all the results? Like yeah, England exactly. can suddenly snatch it if if um, Scotland go over. We won't talk about Scotland too much. No one really wants to. Yeah, about you know that that <laughs> later, but like the the tournament's been flipped on his head, and suddenly it's you know it's it's all over the place, and you could go and do something pretty special down in Wales. So I'm um, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of people rooting for Italy this weekend yeah. going into that game and wanting you boys to win. So it'll be it'll be interesting to to see you go down there and how it works out. But you're right that that um, victory two years ago puts you on a good path, and now you're going back down there having done it before. Yeah, look. It, Obviously, it's not going to. I personally think it, it may be one of our biggest challenges going into this week. As um, you know, they even they're having a quite a difficult period as well. Um, but they've also got a, a very young squad who's ready to put on a performance, and and, and they want to give back to their country. Obviously, with the struggle that they have been facing the last two years, um, so they've got they've got a lot to play for, and as well as as, as we do. So it's not going to be easy going there. So. How's it been though, Monty? Sort of integrating in with Leon. There's some, you know, there's some serious backline firepower with uh, with you know yourself, Semi. Uh, we've got Rates and and Dumortier as well, who's who's a phenomenal uh, player for France. You know, how has, how have you found things? Yeah, awesome. It's, it, it's it's French rugby going into the French system has been a little bit weird for me because. Um, I don't know, just the way with the whole process of doing things, and um, but honestly, just with the with the squad, it's been it, it's been crazy, especially to play outside the likes of Semi, who's mate that guy. Just give him the ball, and you don't really have to do much to be honest. Just make sure you're there to support because he's always looking to free his hands, which is crazy. That guy's just a natural talent. He actually came. He was <laughs> after the World Cup. He was gone away for like a good two or three months and so happily his visa was PG <laughs> <laughs> style yeah oh, yeah. yeah his visa and all the boys were just like oh mate this guy's having a laugh and he went away came back and he go and, and I said man have you done anything like because he, he didn't he was, I think it was gone two or three months anyways his first week back they wanted him to play and he he's just said no 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 I'll I'll have this week to rest and then he'll train he'll play the week after. So it was this year he literally only did one week or two weeks preparation after having two three months off and I was like what were you doing during that period? He's like I was just like drinking cava every single day. First game back <laughs> first game back against Bristol man of the match and I was like fuck sake mate. Hey I'm it's fucking I'm ruining it like how they do it they. But, and like turn up to a new club. I remember Leoni Nakarawa used to always do it. Bruss, there's a, a, there's a there's like a, a monsoon on the island we can't leave. And then it'd be there's a visa problem. <laughs> and fucking, oh. and they used to come to me. I was like the babysitter. They're like, Willis on it, you have to go and find Nakarawa. <laughs> oh mate. <laughs> These Fijians, mate, they just they, they live present. You gotta let them do their thing. You've got to literally yeah. It's what makes them happy. If it makes them happy, if they want to come to the training drunk or what and or whatnot, then <laughs> so be it. So be it. Yeah. Monty, there was a very funny because uh, our other co-host is uh, Max Lee, who who plays at Bristol, and so yeah. he was playing in that game. And he said the semi obviously was at Bristol last season, but it's the first time. And I don't think Ryan, I don't think you've ever seen this before, but he came into the Bristol changing room before the game to be like, "All right, lads, patting people on the bum." Like, oh my God, how are you doing? And everyone's like, what "The fuck are you doing in here?" So that's just classic, oh, him, right? Yeah, yeah right. and he was, like, I think it was, was texting. Um, I think he was texting. Uh, it was, it was uh, somebody, somebody to do with the sports, with the sports equipment, equipment for, for, for Bristol. Bristol. He was, he was like, like texting him, him, "Oh, can, can you bring, bring my socks? Can you bring?" bring... <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "Oh, wait, oh, he's oh, class, he's, he's class." class. So good, so good, brilliant. Well, look, Monty, we're we're gonna we're gonna let you go. Uh, obviously, good. Well, 
from from a Welsh perspective, not that much good luck. But I think from the neutral's perspective, very much good luck for uh, for the weekend and what is hopefully a fantastic finale uh, to what's been a, a great Six Nations uh, for you guys so far. But uh, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to come and chat to us. Oh, awesome. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, what a fella. What a lovely bloke. Right, Mark, where are we going next? I suppose we better cover off that other match. The other match. Look at you, the disdain. Yeah, that one was highly entertaining. Wales versus France. France coming uh, through in the end, but uh, for the neutral, enjoyable stuff. Well, hold on. There's a neutral and then there's you who oh, claims to be Worst both. Worst game. So I, hate I, right? I hate it. You I hate it. Okay? There's no, there's never a good result unless, do you know what I mean? Like at one point you're like, oh, that's a great try. But then that, then the other part of you is hurting a bit. And in the end, I, I genuinely so don't surely enjoy you, it. Surely you wanted a draw with a bonus point with four tries each. That would have been the best case scenario. Yes. But that didn't happen. Although, as I said earlier, boys, fucking Wales. Like, they're now managing to stay in games, but just not finish them off. Like, they did it against Ireland, didn't they? Um, so it's almost like flipped, because what we spoke about Italy being like a 60-minute team. So Wales will get there. Um, there were some, some good performances. They, like, clung in there. Uh, France, pretty poor in defence, but um, there was that moment, yeah, where I headed out for Sunday lunch, and I'm thinking, I'm coming back to the fucking nuttiest weekend of rugby. Um, but it, it wasn't to be, was it, Max? It wasn't to be. The French just... The scoreline flattered them, I think, the French, with those last two tries and charged down um, from your big man. What's his name again? Taufa Taufa Fanua. Um, yeah, the big... The big Bro, you know, how good uh, was that uh, charge uh, down? And it's like, it just... It doesn't make sense that a man that size can sort of shift that quickly, but he gets it done. Fair play. Yeah, but equally, like, how shit from Wales because they don't have any blockers in place. It's just a, a sort of he's right there. You, mm. If I'm if I'm Gareth Davies, I'm looking up, going, "Oh look, there's a giant six foot ten man there." That's got <laughs> oh, look. Arm on Earth. I in better not shadow. Him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Falcon. Why <What? laughs> <Why? laughs> <Why? laughs> <Why? laughs> here? <laughs> Did someone just shut the room? Yeah, no, outrageous. But yeah, and so you know what I mean, Max. It, it almost flattered him a little bit. So yeah, was, but ultimately, I just feel like Wales are just—they just once they get a few of their those few of those injured names back, I think they'll be a very very different beast. They're just lacking a bit of firepower, aren't they up front? They're just like I know comparing people to the French packs not the best. I mean, you're always going to look a little smaller, but they just lack a little bit of a, like, they just need a, t you know, like go to Poland for a, a camp, get ginormous, maybe take some strange supplements, <laughs> come back looking a little bit more ferocious. I need some more Andy Powell's as well. Yeah, yeah, a couple, yeah, maybe a couple more. Yeah, basically. Just a bit. couple more Powellies, a couple more Powellies and they'll be all right. Yeah, like, but I thought <laughs> Daff, uh, Dafford had a great game. Um, Man, how about that hooker who hadn't, who hadn't had a start yet and he's he's coming off the bench? Uh, Evan Lloyd. Obviously, I mean, Lepper continues his incredible turnover spree. He's, he's leading the tournament there and, um, and Wainwright continues to remain to be the ball-carrying glue to their team. But just a few more a few more of those injured boys coming back who really, really helped them out and I think just transformed the team. But yeah, you're right. They were in there for most, for the most part. The scoreline certainly fired the French, but yeah, that bench, that bench is just a bit different at, at this point. Wait, just quick, Legarac. Oh, what about Legarac? That so, pass. Oh, Legarac. Okay. Was he meant to do it? Did he mean to? Do, did he mean? Oh, I don't think he meant it to go that far. He definitely, <laughs> he definitely meant to do it. He whipped it. Yeah, but do, do you know if I tried that in the game, I would fuck it. It would be up. like one of those ones where it went the wrong way and hit your teammate in the head, like knock someone out by accident. <laughs> then yeah. into the hands um, of an old British just... come off, score under the face. <laughs> it was a thing of beauty, boys. It was, was a thing of beauty. Did it, you see it? someone went back? I can't remember the nine that it was back in the World Cup, like 2009, do exactly the same. And, and they showed that clip and then did his clip. It was really cool, but... Um, yeah, nice little, nice also, little touch of skill. There. You love to see it. You love to see it. You, you really yeah, do. Boy, he's he's class. Class. Damien, Damien Penno, though. Finally. That bloke is a shiny Charizard. He's yeah, so good. He be shiny Charizard. For those that don't know what that is, that is that was a good Pokemon back in the day, wasn't it? That was the card. That, that was, was the, the card. Big card. 
That was up there with my shiny Blastoise. <laughs> yeah, but you wanted the shiny. Yeah, but anyway, you wanted the shiny Charizard more. I think they go first edition shiny Charizard's worth a bit. I bet it is. Um, do you know what else is worth a bit? And we should really okay. start thinking about this. OnlyFans, Matt. We've got to do an OnlyFans. <laughs> no, why? Yeah. Uh, what we, do you want what, the what content we, to be? Yeah. Like, what, are we, what are we doing? We'll just dress Mark up and put videos of him no, dressed up. To yeah. be fair, okay. there's a market for sort of little Asian treats, I think. And I think if you... I think you can get... You can get... You just call yourself a little Asian yeah, treat. I think so. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I've had my little niche. Mark, just do this. Like, this could be our first bit of content. Just do this. Yeah, perfect. Anyway, OnlyFans. So that's what we thought of the Wales France game. That's how much we cared after the, the madness that uh, prevailed the day before. Wait, wait, wait. But um, can I just get a view, then, fellas, from the two of you? Mm. Yeah. Because it feels like, let's say heartbreakingly for me, that Wales do pick up the wooden spoon with five five l's is it a weird wooden spoon in as in that it's not also there's not this negativity that's surrounding the team like the, i don't know it feels from a fan's perspective as though there is some building element and that it, we aren't just a bad team at the bottom of the table that there's 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 more to come from this team or do you think we're just you know that's just classic sort of fans thinking the best when when they shouldn't be I think they've got youth on their side, haven't they? They've got that. They've got that excuse. Let's yeah. say, like they've got a lot of youth. They've got the excuse of like we're still we're looking to rebuild. Um, bloody lot of youngsters. Like the, we we talk about it every week. The state of the game in Wales at the moment. One rule they've got to get rid of and get to get rid of quick is that um, foreign player rule. Yeah, get rid of it. Just mm. fucking patch it, and uh, and then start building after this Six Nations with those players being able allowed, allowed to come in mm. because they've got some incredible players outside of. Um, Wales as well so yeah I don't know what you think Max but I reckon they've got an alright excuse to, to be on the bill 100% I think they recognise the situation that Gallon's in especially with sort of laundry list of injuries to boot and the trajectory of some of these younger players is going to be pretty spectacular in the long run yeah Boys, oh, hark your memories back we lost to you guys we lost to Scotland by a point and England by two points it's not you know and, and those are pretty relatively far it's as fine a margin as as you can get in in international rugby so you know on, on perhaps in any other year we wouldn't be looking at that wooden spoon so I don't know. positive yeah well that's it and, and that's why you look at it because they've not they've not been absolutely blown off the park and even in that game against france i, I honestly think that, that it flattered france the, the last 15 minutes those two tries were, were pretty unlucky so the way they've gone you look at the record, though. Everyone's putting that that picture up of loss, 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 one loss, 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 or something stupid like that. And there's a big, you know, like a big red line. But actually, if you look at it, you know, they've played pretty well. They've found moments. They've just not put a full eight minutes together, and that's a young team. So they'll be all right. We love the Welsh. We still we still like the Welsh, don't we? So you know, there is some po positives to be taken so far from from this campaign for the Welsh. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. I think Gaffer Jenkins at captain. Also, that six experiment worked out. Bloke was um, everywhere where the ball was. Like he was really, he looked very comfy in that position. He was sort of enforcing. Obviously, it was a tough day shepherding some of those big French specimens, but I think he gave a very good account of himself. So, I had some more questions, but it's cool having him and Will Rollins both on the same team. Second most Starting amount of that. tackles, right after 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 Mitch Lamoro. Few, hey, look. It, let's also so Wales. It's not as bad as it looks, and there is some the brighter future for the youngsters. But uh, for France, bearing in mind everything that's happened to them, and and this we've talked about it before. This hangover still from the World Cup, where they just don't mm. seem to be, and, and they're missing Dupont, but they are still in this kind of weird phase of not really knowing. You know, still trying to get over the breakup. I feel, uh, but. What's going to happen in Lyon on Saturday, Max? I reckon they can get the dub, yeah. I reckon they got the sort of athletes that can deal with the, the French sort of firepower up front. God, I'm so relieved. You've just, you've just jinxed it. So I'm so relieved for the French win now. Oh, for a sick, because I was worried. So, yeah. To be fair, I have that power at the moment. Whatever, whatever we say, if I can the Come on, happens. come on, Ryan. So, Give it. How many, how many do England win by, Wilf? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to England by one. That's not really going to happen. I think France will win. I um, I equally think that 
Um, whilst we're on our predictions, that there's going to be a draw over in Dublin. I think it's going to be uh, 17-all. Be seventy nil to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to mean that. Don't come back on you, little prick. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, on man. the internet now. You're fucked. And uh, the other thing, um, I genuinely think Italy will win, um, as Monty um, said. You know, go down there and they'll do a win. So Italy to win. Max, can Italy do it? Hundred percent. Yeah. With you, I think I think it's going to be a tighter game than people expect. But I think Italy get it done. And you're both there going you for are. England wins. No, Ryan, you've said you think France will win that one. Yeah, I'll burst yeah. the ball France by bubble one. before it started to float too far. Uh, well, urge everybody for the final round to head into our uh, fantasy Six Nations More or Nothing League to see uh, how everybody's doing and um, how are you boys doing on that, by the way. I, I haven't looked this week. Let's just yeah, leave it to next that. week. Leave it. The final, the final things. I've I've been hurt, clawing my way back in. Right. In any case, uh, thank you, boys, uh, so much, Max. Despite clearly being in some trouble, you are not oh, trouble. You mean, no. Yeah. From no, nah, you guys, you guys have buoyed me. It's, it's revived me a little bit, actually. It's always a pleasure That's talking it. to you guys. You always sort of bring 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 the best out of me for the most part, right? Right. That's it. That's what we're here for, mate. That's where we're here. And Mark, where are you? You're in some you're about to head out into oh, the I'm in uh dirty no, desk. I'm, of, no, I'm not heading out. I've got a big day, big commercial to film tomorrow. Brand new BMW oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Mark's on holiday again. <laughs> Mark is on holiday again. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. Uh thank you for that, Ryan. And thank you so much, Max, as well. Thank you all for listening. Uh, and or watching and thank you again to Monty Iwani for giving us uh, the Italian insight on uh, their fabulous win and we will see you all next week for the culmination the apotheosis of the Six Nations see you then more or nothing